hi everybody i'm louise from wildflower wool and welcome back this is part 11 of this huge yarn room organizational project i am standing here i've got an empty shelf behind me it is all set to reshelf some of the yarn that we sorted through yesterday if you watch part 10 you'll see that we sorted through some of the um well what is soon to be the sock wall shelf and i took off a lot of worsted weight yarn some stuff I'm getting rid of, some stuff is gonna be reshelved right behind me. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna give you a little look. I've organized my mess from yesterday. I've got it all in neat little piles on the floor. My goal today is to get everything on the floor reshelved, which means I'm gonna to have to do some jiggling around of stuff that I've already shelved. So let me show you what I got. Let's start right here. Look at this tote. This is the tote that is filled with yarn that's being donated. And it is, as you can see, it is way over full. So hopefully you're going to see some yarn in here and say, way to go, Louise. I was hoping you'd get rid of that. That kind of peachy colored grace, that Louise Harding yarn. Yeah, there's a bunch. And this um, Barocco sock yarn, I have put all of that in there. To pass along. So what do I have to reshelve? This is a bunch of lace. This is all, so far I think all the lace, well, I'm not gonna say all the lace weight, but it's a bunch of what I have. There's some Briggs and Little, this Cascade Fixation, that's gonna go over on the DK. This is an acrylic, you can see it's a Bernat yarn. I've had that forever and ever and ever, and I've always wanted to make a sweater out of it. So I'm gonna hold on to that. There's some chunky Rowan yarn that had started a hat. I found two more balls of County. That blue teal, that's that um, Patton's DK Superwash. It needs to find a home up here on the shelf somewhere. I found another skein of that bright orange. That beautiful, those three balls of yellow, those have to find a special spot. And then there's some Christmas yarn. There's that yarn. I was hoping I'd have enough for a sweater. Some oddballs of classic wool. Worsted acrylic that I'm going to keep. Yeah, and just some, uh, that is that, el well, I'm not sure what that is. That mystery fiber. I'm going to keep, this is that brilliant, that red glittery. Because I have a project started with it. So I'm going to hold on to that yarn. I'm not going to get rid of it until I find the project and decide what exactly what I'm going to do. I found this yellow container and I filled it up with some classic wool. And this is what I was filling up in part 10's video. This is, oh, there's another ball of county sitting on top. Anyway, I want to kind of sort through that because a lot of that is worse. It needs to go on the two shelves that I just showed you. And then, if you didn't see yesterday's video, this is what we worked on. This is going to be all sock weight yarn. So I've kind of started putting things on there. Things are gonna get moved around as I work on that. But you know what, this is the start of the really exciting yarn organizing now because we're gonna make all of this into a sock yarn wall, which means that I'm also going to have to take you down to the basement because that's where a bunch of sock yarn is still sitting. The fun is really about to begin. All right, let's start reshelving. I'm going to turn the camera around and grab your knitting, get comfy, and let's see what we can get reshelved and get some of these containers empty because once this is empty, this one, and the yellow one, I can fill it up with sock yarn. So I should probably mention this lovely shelf that looks so nice that we we filled that up, I don't know, a few weekends ago. I'm going to have to move some of it because this cubby right here and this one up here is Patton's Classic Wool, which needs to go over here. So I'm going to... Yeah, empty some of these because I need a little more space for some DK weight. So I think I'll go ahead and I'll do that. 
I'll move those two cubbies over here. <laughs> That'll be the first to get two out of those, these empty shelves. They're going to be filled before we even notice. I'm going to move those and then we'll get started with what's on the floor. I'm going to start restocking and I think part of this I'll probably just speed up so we can zoom through all of this really quick and get to the fun stuff, which is the sock hair. That's cleared up kind of part of the floor over here. Next up, this yellow tote. Look at this. All right. This is all, again, filled with Patton's Classic Wool. Start filling in the, in the holes up here on the top. I changed my mind. Instead of using that or emptying out that yellow container first, I'm going to pull the chair over and empty out this black container. Thinking most of this is classic wool. And I'm just going to try to fill up this top shelf with just all classic wool. I'm just going to make this a miscellaneous part ball, odd little bits and just fill up that shelf. Hmm. These rovings. I'm not sure where they're gonna go. I don't know if they'll go out here on a shelf or if there's room in my spinning cabinet. These are gonna sit a Set aside. They may just get stuck wherever there's an empty space. Okay, empty container for now. Now I'm gonna grab the yellow container. Oh, I still had, I still had some sitting here on the chair behind the container. And now what I've got left in here are just little balls. Little balls of classic wool. I'm pretty sure I wound these up for students one time for um, hmm, a double knitting or a brioche class. Two colors. So they probably had a white and one of these purples, I think. So these are just odd little bits that you know I couldn't throw away. So I will just <laughs> I, uh, you know what I think? I think these need I'm just gonna set these here. For right now. I think they need to go in a bag just so they don't unravel and get tangled. Success. Another empty container. And my shelf is getting full, really full, really quick. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's see what's next. What is going to be next? That's the question. I need to think for a minute. There were some extra balls sitting over there on the floor. I always like finding white because I can die with this. Well, this shelf's not gonna look super pretty right now. I'm just getting the yarn on there. So two more balls of classic wool. I, oh, and this is another ball of mercury, which I ran out of. It, it didn't all fit in the one cubby, so it's going to... Two more balls are up here. That's okay. So what I've got left, I think this is all that's left, is the hemp, or not, indigo. Indigo dyed yarn. I'm going to put it back just on its own. Oh, I see. <laughs> just when you think you've got it all, I see more over there. It's a really nice dark blue. I'll go grab it too. But because this is all, I want this to all be one project and it is all worsted weight. And most of it, did, well, is, I was gonna say, did start out as classic wool, which I guess it still is since I've, I've just dyed it. This was all, this is the white ball I just tucked up there. That's what all this started out as. 
so it's always fun to find extra weight because you know I don't well and I won't say I never do but I don't typically just knit with weight I always dye it with something okay let me grab the dark stuff that's behind the camera I will be right back and I like this I like that it's so, it's so much darker when I actually get around to making this project, it will be really fun having all the different shades of indigo blue. Okay, let me see. Survey the situation and see what is left. We've got Briggs and Little down here. So we've got some bulky that I see an empty little cubby down here on the bottom. I do have a I do have some stuff sitting in front of it. Let me pull that out. And then I think this bulky that's on the floor, we can tuck it down there. I'll bring you down lower so you can see what I'm doing. I'm comfy down here on the floor. And let's see what we can fit. Here is an empty shelf. Fantastic. This one here, I can put some stuff on top of there. And as some very perceptive viewer mentioned, Louise, you've got this one huge ball taking up a whole shelf. Mind you, this one ball takes up a whole pile of this yarn, but this is easier to move around. So I may just take this guy out for right now, find a better spot for that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Okay. Um, Briggs and Little. Let's put more Briggs and Little right down here. This is going to take, I'm going to go through all of this later on and sort it all out again, but let's get it in the center here. Or let's get it on the shelf. I want to get the center of this room cleared out just in case I have to make a run to the store and buy another shelf or two. I actually went I've been looking online because I think I told you the last shelf I bought, it was the last one I could find in the city and all of the home, um, you know, like Canadian Tire, Home Depot, Lowe's, well, did I look anywhere else? Anyway, they, they were all sold out. All the white shelves were sold out. Then last week, there was some came back in stock. So I took a look last night because after yesterday's video, I was kind of like saying, well, you know, I, hopefully I can get all this on the shelf. And then I thought about it, went downstairs, I knit, and I'm like, Ugh, I really don't think there's any way I, ca I can possibly get all of this on the current shelves. My thinking was, I thought, why go buy two more shelves? Because eventually I want to work my way through a lot of this yarn. And I don't ever intend to buy this much yarn again to have in my stash. So hopefully I'll end up with two empty shelves that I don't need. And I tossed around the idea that, you know, I could, and I could possibly use them for something else. Anyways, and I thought, like, I think a couple of people mentioned to me, they're like, Louise, why spend money on shelves when you could buy a sweater quantity of yarn? And I have to say, I, I'll, that thought crossed my mind. Instead of going to Canadian Tire and buying shelves, I could go to Little Red Mitten or Knit Stitch and buy some really pretty yarn. But the reality of it is, here's that bright pink, that if I want to get all of this yarn out of bags, out of totes that are piled in my corner of my bedroom, if I want them out so I can see them and use them, I think I'm going to have to get more shelves. So be prepared. We may go on a, on a shelf shopping trip again this weekend. Okay, oops, where's the end of this? This guy's gonna go back down here. We'll put this over here. So this is all some bulky weight. This is more of that pretty stuff from Knit Stitch. This makes me so happy. Now I'm gonna actually be able to have it. It's, look at that. I think we got it all. Fantastic on the shelf so I can actually see it and be able to use it when I want to. 
Okay, that's good. Now, though, I put all this lace weight that I see an empty cubby over here with the, well, it's with, um, <laughs> it's with the dishcloth. It's with the cotton. But maybe I will just put it there for now until until we see if I end up buying more shelves then I'll take the lace weight no you know what there's no point in putting lace weight with the cotton because I know there's more cotton to come so there's no point in filling that okay maybe I will that black container that's empty I think I'll just put the lace weight in there for now until it finds its permanent home okay we're getting closer to dealing with some sock care and everybody that makes me excited. Yep, I'm gonna shut you off. I'm gonna get turned around and then we'll start again. I found two more balls of counting. Remember I said how I like this yarn? You guys all know what happens when I find yarn that I like. It seems to multiply very quickly and I swear all on its own. So we had, oh dear, I'm looking at the county little cubby that we had, we were working with last night and guess what? It's full. So I guess this is going to go right in, on the shelf above it and it'll just have to sit with some sock yarn. Okay, let's turn around and let's deal with some more yarn. I've got the black tote here. I'm going to put the lace weight in here. So if you just want to see, I'll just quickly show you quick, quick recap of lace weight. Lace weight yarn that I seem to buy a ton of and never knit with. Oh, this is the sea silk. Oh, and Emma, if you are watching this, Emma told me about a fantastic series, um, a knitting series that's a, a mystery, and it has a pattern at the back of every book. I actually found it at my library, Emma. After you told me about that, it was a, quite a few episodes ago, like a couple weeks ago, I actually went online, I looked, found it at the library, found which library it was in the city, and I drove there. I wasn't able to get book one, but I got book two. Book one is not in our library system at all. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem, but I'm going to start reading book two. Well, thanks for the tip. I'm always looking for new books to read. Oh, look at this. Lopey lace weight. This is like a double extra fun yarn. Lopey and lace weight combined together. Lovely. There's the ball band. Oh, can't wait. That yarn came from Norway, which makes it even triply special. And here is more. Oh, and one little ball. There's a bunch of these around somewhere. Okay, lace weight. That almost filled that, didn't it? Okay. We'll just leave that there. If we come across any more lace weight, we know which, where we can set it for the time being. Until we get more, well, until we get more shelves. I think it's coming quite apparent that I'm probably going to have to go shelf shopping, right? Even though I'm still kind of living in a delusional world that... I can maybe still get it all to fit on the shelves that I have. Okay, let's carry on. While I'm sitting down here, I just turned around and surprise, surprise. What do, what do I see? This looks like it's mostly classic wool. And that's classic wool because that's more that, that's I'm not even on camera. Oh, well, you don't need to see me. You want to see the yarn anyways, right? This is more of the mercury. Okay. We've got somewhere to move over there, which will free up this. Yeah. Okay. Classic wool is going to go over there. Our next step is we're going to go through this shelf and see whatever is not sock yarn. If there's any more worsted weight or just random whatever the heck may be on here. I'm going to take it off. And I've got my trusty yellow container here that I'm going to put, put whatever is in sock yarn is going to go in here. 
Okay, I know this is all sock yarn. Okay. Well, sock yarn except for this, this poor sad looking skein of hemp. I don't know, oh yeah, yay. I don't know what happened to her. And okay. Well, and, and here's the rest of it. Okay, this is all sock yarn, sock yarn, sock yarn. I'll take a look for you down on the very bottom. Um, oh. Okay, this is not sock yarn. This is more of that gray, that, what is it? Debbie Bliss Cashmere Merino Chunky. I'm starting to think that I just pulled out that whole sweater. That's why, hold on, I'm gonna go grab it for you. Well, look at this, proof that yarn sorting this room worked because I knew exactly where this was and I went and grabbed it off the shelf. Okay, I'm kind of thinking that this is the whole sweater. <laughs> look at all these little balls, oh my gosh. I was thinking, I guess that's why I didn't know where the part knit sweater was because apparently at some time, I'm guessing I've just pulled the whole thing out. Um, now what to do with it? What can I, well, what, can, what could I remake with it? I could do another sweater. I could do anything. I have a sweater quantity of this. So it's chunky. So this is going to go back over here with that, but I won't run over there right now. I'll do that in a couple minutes. But yeah, so definitely sock yarn. See what else is down here. Oh boy. Oh. See what you find on the very bottom shelf where it's out of sight. Remember this stuff? This was one of the first yarns that we we sorted through. This is this chunky 100% wool and I have a bunch of it over on that shelf. So I know where this goes to. Dare we look again. Okay, all sock yarn. I think we're all sock yarn there. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is just a bunch of little knick knacky <laughs> marketing. I bought this tin. It had candies in it that I had no intention of eating just for the tin because I thought it was cute. But the rest of this is. Oh, I was wondering where these went. Um, this one's got a crochet hook on one end and a knitting needle on the other for just fixing mistakes. I've got, oh, my cute little butterfly scissors. Okay. <laughs> Carrying on. That was cute to find. Look at that. Things just get tucked away. Oh, now this is a whole brand of yarn that we haven't even come across yet you guys and this I'll tell you right now is another one of my favorites which you know means there's gonna be a little bit of it not super crazy amount of this though pulsed garn and this feels this is coast this is coast because it is really soft ah uh, but this is this is a light fingering weight so it needs to go down here where there's fingering weight yarn with no nylon. So we'll just move it down there. First glance, this obviously is not sock yarn. Oh, oh, I've got some fun stuff in here too. You know what this is? I'm sure this is alpaca. This is another one of Zeraldo alpacas. Debbie had some bulky weight yarn dyed up. This was a number of years ago. And I think she called it farm yarn. And it makes, it makes a really nice, you can, I think I've done a scarf or a cowl out of something very similar to this. So that is chunky. We're getting a pile on the floor of chunky again, you guys. And, oh, look at these. My DPN needle keeps, look at this. These were gifted to me. Oh, look at that. There's some fun things. Okay, tape measure, more stuff. I'm gonna put all of this together. Then I can sort it as something. Hmm, that may be a sorting out day. All the, all the um, 
what do you call them? The accessories, the odds and ends, you know, cable needles, stitch markers. Uh, we'll see. We won't get too far ahead of ourselves on that. Okay, here's a box we don't need. This is filled with knitting needles. Oh, and a lavender sachet just to make it smell pretty. My knitted owl. We'll find a we'll find a spot for him to sit. But we'll move those knitting needles because they don't need to be here. This box. Okay, it has snowflakes on it. So that's telling me it's either a Christmassy. Yes, it. Oh, oh yes. Oh, is there scissors in here? Scissors. Oh. Oh, there's a bunch of scissors in here. Oh, you know what this was? <laughs> Toilet paper roll. Okay. This was from making those little Santa hats. Have you guys seen on, I, I'm sure I saw this on Pinterest. You cut this, this is the brim of Santa's hat. Then you cut long lengths. Can I do this really quick? You cut a long length of yarn and then you double it. You pull it through the paper towel roll, pull the end through the loop and pull it up. So then you go all the way around here and use any color Christmas. So you're making a little Santa hat. Did I say that? And you want to have your tail, your, your length of yarn long enough because this is going to be where you double it makes the brim. This is the body of the hat. So you do this longer is better is what I'm saying. You go all the way around. So you fill it any colors, you know, you can do it all red. You can alternate red, white, red, white, green, make them all green, whatever. Then you come all the way around. You kind of fluff them, pull them down and actually, yeah, pull it down this way and you gather them all together and you tie them. So the, all of these strings make the body of the hat. And then where you've tied it, you've got all these little ends that makes like a pom-pom. And then you just snip them off for however long you want your strings for the pom-pom. And it's, they're really cute. You can leave a couple tails longer if you want to, and then you can um, hang it on the Christmas tree. They're always fun. I do a lot of these um, at work with um, my community knitting groups that I do at the libraries. These are always fun. Every, every few years, you know, you've got new people in your knitting group, pull these out, start collecting. You can collect paper towel rolls, but they are heavier and they're harder to cut. Toilet paper rolls are thinner and make it easier. Anyways, so of course I have to have a dedicated box for making my Santa hats. Little bits of yarn. That's what's in there. This is just going to need to find, I don't know, another home. We'll just set it up there for now. Okay, all of this hemp. Oh, you guys, this stuff makes me happy. Oh, I don't even think I can carry it, pull it all out. These were the three that we found yesterday. I just stuck them over here. This is the one that I dyed. And I've got it in lots of fun colors. Well, you know, fun if you're me who like these autumn -y colors, I'm sure it also comes in pink and blues and shades of purples. But those, you know, not something that I really want to, well, I mean, not that I don't want to knit with it, but it's not what I wear. Like these are my colors, right? And this hemp, like yesterday we talked about how this would make great dishcloths. Even though I have not tried it, but I am now, now that that thought just came out of nowhere and popped in my head, I'm going to, I'm going to give that a try, but these also make really good market bags. They make fantastic summer tops. It's great. hundred percent hemp. I wish you could feel it. I thought after, you know what, I watched yesterday's video back and I thought, oh, maybe I did a disservice when I was talking about this because I said how it doesn't feel soft and whatever, but it's not, that's not a bad thing. Like it's just like crochet cotton. Is that a good way to describe it? Like it's not super, super soft, like a soft merino or anything, but it's just like a cotton. It's just, I don't know. You just need to feel it. 
find a yarn shop that has it and go feel it and maybe try knitting with it. Oh, look at that. Two balls of sock yarn stuck in the back under. Okay. What is this? Oh, this is, is this, is this lace weight you guys? Uh, what is the yardage on here? Oh, I was only 600 and okay. It's 600 meters. <laughs> and 150 grams. So this could be, okay. What's the, why can I, oh, a size four to five spring rainbow. No. Okay. I think that's, what do you knit with that is this? Okay. I think that is just the one strand. So we're going to consider that fingering weight and we're going to move it down there. Every time I am chatting with you guys and I look at a ball band, I can never find the information that I'm looking for. Okay. Look at this purple. Did I, I know this is crinkly. See, it does come in a nice bright purple. We'll put that over there with the hemp. And more sock yarn. Oh, look. In one of the other videos, I told you how I was, I was making socks for my, my nephew when he was really little. This looks like the other half of that ball. Because I think the other half is still down here on the floor. Okay, this is sock yarn, but it's not patents. So we'll put it over there. Okay, this is not sock yarn. What is this though? Briggs and Little. All right, well, we all know where that goes. Um, This looks like, okay, did I look? Sock yarn, sock yarn, sock yarn. Okay, looks like we're good. We're whipping through this pretty quick. Whole bag. Oh, I can still smell it through here. Okay. Ooh. What is this? Lace? Hmm. Okay. This is where I kind of run into... I'm not sure what to classify. Okay. There's no... Okay. It says ca... It says cash... Cashmino lace. Superwash. Merino and cashmere, 500 yards and 100 grams. So I guess this goes with our lace, which we know where that is too. Oh boy, I wonder how much more lace we're going to find in here. I don't know what it is. Is anybody else addicted to lace yarn? I love it. I Just because it's so fine and lightweight, but yet I never get around to knitting with it. Maybe I need to fix that. Ooh, Shetland Double Knit Wendy. This looks like an older. Anybody have any of that in their stash? Machine washable. Hmm. 100% wool. Okay, that'll go in there. Patton's Decor. So this is an 80-20, 80, 80 acrylic 20, I think is the, is the breakdown. It's mostly acrylic. Nope, 75-25. 75 acrylic, 25 wool. And I think they say you can wash this. Yes. So you can wash this carefully. Look at those. So those maybe will go over where I had my worsted acrylic. We'll put that over there. Oh, there's some nice stuff up here. But it is thing that, oh my gosh, that could be more lace. Briggs and Little. Can you guys tell by the look if it's Briggs and Little? I can usually tell by the look. And if you're not sure, just a quick touch. And it feels really wooly wool. Wooly wooly. Wooly wooly wooly. <laughs> Is that what do I want to say that? It feels sheepy. Rustic-y. That's what it feels like. Um. What else? Okay. More lavender, more lavender, and more of these cedar blocks. Now this stuff is pretty. 
This came from Feather Your Nest and Sonia. So this would have been another little trip with Don and Lisa from the Codependent Enders. And this is Alpaca Merino. Isaker is Isaker. Is that how you say this? And I bought this, of course, to do something wonderful with. And um, it didn't happen, obviously. Like so many things, lots of now. But what weight is this? I think I'm pretty sure this is a look considered. I don't. I won't worry about that right yet. We'll just sort through. This is sock, but not cottons. Okay, this is not sock weight. I do not believe. Is this a fingering weight? Oh, maybe it is. I mean, it's not sock yarn though. Oh, okay. Wrong again, Louise. This is sock yarn. Does it have cotton, wool, and polyamide? Okay, so even though it says it's sock yarn, I have no, I didn't buy this to make socks with. I made this for a shawl or a sweater. Has anybody made actual socks that you wear on your feet? <laughs> I guess what else would you do with a sock, right? But have you made socks and worn them and how do they wear? Do you like? I don't know. I just never ever consider this to be an actual pair of socks. I always think of this as a shawl or a sweater. Okay. How much of this do I have? Teo sock yarn. I wonder if, I think I had bought this to do like a hitchhiker with. Now let's just see, Korean sock yarn. So this has cotton in it, which I think is why I was had bought it for the shawl. This one does not, I'm sure, because I can tell by the feel. Wool and nylon. I'm just going to set this all in this bin. So if it's sock weight, it's going to go at the end. Just, yeah. Okay. Even though it has nylon, it's not, I'm not, I'm not considering it sock yarn. Um, silk garden sock yarn. Do you think all of this is sock yarn? Korean sock yarn again. It kind of has that look. It is pretty fine, isn't it? Oh. I've started knitting with this. Sock yarn. Oh. See, isn't that funny? When I first saw Noro, I just immediately assumed that it would be heavier than sock weight. I had no idea I had this much sock yarn or in this color. <laughs> what was I thinking there? I was, again, I must have been thinking my mom or friend because yeah more of this tail I'm saying tail but I don't know I have trouble pronouncing can you see that Noro names you might as well just look at all the pretty colors now that's a bright one isn't it carry-on this must be the same kind of feels like it Okay, those two, I think those are the two, those must be, I'm guessing these are the same color. Color 23. Am I, what? No, it's not. Well, I guess this doesn't have purple in it, does it? And this does. Anyway, first thought, a glance, I thought that was gonna be kind of like the um, county where they kind of look different from the outside, but they're really the same. But those ones actually are different. Okay, so what about these ones must, there's no purple. I'm not seeing purple in this one, so this one must be different too. Color S7, yeah, color S221. Okay, well, I am well stocked with two kinds of sock hair in here. This one's got, oh, what is this? This one's got cotton in it again. Is this a, yeah, that's that tail one again. Okay, well, anyways, this is just moving from one cubby to another down further. Okay, I know this is classic wool. 
as I can tell by the color. More decor. Oh, Sheep Spot. Have you guys heard of Sheep Spot? This is another lady here in London. I think she focuses more just strictly on fiber now. She used to, she's breed specific. She used to have breed specific yarn that she dyes. But I think she no longer has any actual yarn. She has all fiber, dyed fiber. She teaches spinning classes, does workshops. And this is a number two. So this doesn't even belong over in the sock weight, but look at how pretty those colors are. So if, you if you're into spinning at all, if you haven't heard of Sheep Spot, her name is Sasha, go look her up. You'll be, I'm sure you will love what she has to offer. Oh, more Harrisville. I love this. And I do not have a whole lot of it. I had enough for a shawl. Oh my goodness, this, I knew I had some of Debbie's yarn here of The Loving Path. There's another one for you. Okay, no wool in this one either, so that's gotta go. If you haven't seen The Loving Path's yarn, go take a look on Instagram and Etsy. This is another local dyer. She has beautiful, beautiful colors. I know this, I think, no, I'm not gonna say for sure. Spruce Lee is this kind of tealy green, bluey green, and then this yellow, Lena. Stardust. Oh, Stardust Base, Stardust Base, because it has the sparkle, a little bit of sparkle in it. I remember I, <laughs> this is a, um, Cheryl from My Needle Crafts, myself, and Debbie from The Loving Path. The three of us went up two years ago to Quartha, to the Quartha Fiber Festival, and I was teaching. They were vending. We rode up together. We, <laughs> we shared a hotel room together and that story I can't I can't even tell you that one <laughs> I'm not gonna record that story anyways that was a night I'm sure the three of us will never forget and anyways Debbie lives like literally 10 minutes from my house and I bought this yarn from her up at Cortha <laughs> because but it was so fantastic because there when she was setting up her booth I think I helped her you know pull up bins or do whatever. But there you get to see all of her yarn in person and you can touch and feel and you can look. So it was, it was the perfect time. So I did a little shopping at her booth, which, um, you know, is a little funny cause I could have just went to her house. But anyways, so it is still here in my stash and these two were meant to be a project together. So we'll just move those. I don't know. Over here. This. Okay. Now what is this? Oops. A cedar block. Um, I'm wondering where did I put, no, that's totally different. Okay. Do you guys want to hold on for a second? I have to, I have to, I can see one grouping of colors. And here's the other three different yarn purchases. So one, two, three. <laughs> Anybody else seeing a little bit of a trend here? Any guesses what colors I like? Isn't this funny? I am pretty sure this has a feel to it. This feels like mohair. I think this bundle came from Wellington Fibers, which again is a local fiber mill. They raise Angora sheep, which produces mohair. I know that's confusing, right? Angora sheep give you mohair. And I think if I looked, no, that's what these are. No, this is it. But look at that. I've bought the same set of colorways three times. Maybe I need to knit with it. And, well, if we want to drive this point home a little more. Oh. 
Look at that. And it's lace. And it's lace. And it's lace. All right, we'll put it down here to go over with the lace. Anyways, I guess we know what colors I like. Now, this does not look like sock yarn. This looks like a DK. So we'll, we'll put it over there. Oh, my gosh. I'll pop that up there. So those are my colors. And yet, I'll follow that up with this. Something totally, totally not me. It is kind of fun though. It has a little bit of orange, a little bit of orange in there. I think that's a saving grace for me. Anyways, this is not patents, so we'll pop it over here. Okay, this is not. Have I got probably down too far for you guys? Oh, this is an alpaca. A single ply, chunky, more patents decor. We'll put that over there. Um, oh my God, this is more of that lace weight. I have two of them. Did you guys just see a ball? <laughs> I had a runaway ball. Okay, I have two of these. Isn't that gorgeous though? Look at the color. This. Now this ball, I'm wondering if I could use this as a Christmas colorway. It's red and white. This was from Zen Garden. They dyed this a couple of years ago for Canada's 100. Why do I have? Oh, I've got a, that's why I have all these tails. <laughs> Anyways, they dyed this for Canada's 150th birthday. Canada's, our flag is red and white, so hence red and white. But I'm also thinking that this could look candy canish, right? So not patents, but it is sock yarn. So it goes over there. This is patents. It can come over here. What I'm thinking is these first three shells, I'm going to try to fit, put all my patents yarn here. I'm sure we're just going to spill over to there though. Let's take a quick sock yarn. Might as well look at these because they're like really pretty. Shrub, lichen and lace. Can you see that? Oh, and the picks. Stroll fingering. Leo and Roxy, Witch's Boots. I should be casting this on right now. Primrose, look at the colors. Oh. Yarn dyers. I mean, I love playing around dyeing yarn, but I don't have the color sense that some of these dyers do. Putting different shades together, it's beautiful. Oh, classic wool. Okay, I'm back. I had a phone call. That's what I was, okay. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm going to repeat myself, but I was saying that dyers, I love to dye yarn. I love the process of dyeing yarn and I just love the fun of seeing what color you get, but like to come up and put beautiful shades, like bright shades and like just gorgeous colors together. Not my strong suit, but so that's why I would never become a full-time dyer. So if anybody's new watching these videos, just a quick little blurb, that's how Wildflower Wool got its name because originally back, I don't know, at least 10 years ago when I started my, my business, that's how Wildflower Wool got its name because I was going to do natural dyeing with flowers and whatever. So that's where Wildflower came from. I started doing it and very quickly realized that that was not where my passion was. I liked the dyeing process, but I didn't like, I had my being in the basement the whole time. I had my basement converted into a dye studio. I had a stove. I had overhead lighting. I had racks for drying. I had uh, wash tubs down there. I started doing it and dyeing with natural yarn when you have to make your dye stock is very, very labor intensive. It uses a lot of water. And I found I was down there all by myself all day long dyeing yarn and I found that I actually liked much better teaching classes so that's where the name stuck but the dyeing just is a, is a hobby for me okay more sock yarn that's not patents class oh no De decor so it's gonna go find another home and okay uh -oh. this is the very bottom shelf again <laughs> This is where we find who knows what. This is filled with minis. I have, 
have I have a design project in mind for some minis, so I should kind of keep these out, not not bury these too far. Anyway, this was a cute little bag that came from Michael's last Christmas, and I thought it would make it fun. Like, look, just a sock knitting bag. I think it's supposed to be a gift bag, but you know, I always try to see what it can be repurposed as for knitting purposes. Oh boy, this yarn. I have a ton. I have bags of this yarn. No, I don't. No. Do I? I might still have some downstairs. I might. <laughs> this came from Pat or um Listable. The name of it. Have to think on the name. I bought a ton of this. So these this is kind of a gray. There was a black and there was a navy. I knit I did a um like a faded sweater with a bunch of this. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> We've seen this before and there's not just one. Oh my gosh. What did I count before? 12 or 13? And I found another skein and now there's a couple more down here. <laughs> Two more. Three more of this Briggs and Little Hunter Orange. As if I didn't already have enough of it, I have more. And what did we talk? We talked about trying to over dye that, didn't I? Oh boy. Just never know what you're gonna find down here. More decor. This goes over here. This is some of the Circle R livestock. This is nice. I like this too. All right, and just for fun, what's on the very, very, very bottom is some blue. Oh, I think we found a skein of this somewhere else, didn't we? Because I said that I thought this was like a Knit Picks mystery box or something. Um, yak fiber, yak and bamboo. Okay, so that needs to go somewhere else. And then there's two of these. Now that's a pretty color. Cascade Heritage Silk, 85 Merino Superwash, 15 Mulberry Silk. That would make a nice big shawl, wouldn't it? Summer, summery, has a summer feel to it. I don't know. I guess the bright, the bright blue. Anyways, that sock yarn, no, it's not. There is no nylon in this. So this again goes down at the end. Okay, I think, oh, is this the same? I have three of these. Okay, this is gonna be a super big. Tur turquoise colorway, oh, this came from Little Red Mitten. <laughs> that shouldn't be a surprise, should it? Okay, why did I get three of them? Not sure. Did I buy two at one time? Totally forgot I had it and went down and bought another one. I would not rule that out. I don't know. Three. I mean, that's a, that's a crazy big, that's a big shawl. Not enough for me to do a sweater. Okay. Okay. I think that is, that's it. We've done all of this. This wall of shelves, it's finished. Now it's just to go and find all the patents cry. Maybe what I will quickly do is kind of sort this. Patents. I want to try to keep all my patents together and all my non-patents, but I have a feeling the non the non-patent sock yarn may I don't know. It may end up on its own shelf. Maybe hopefully I'm wrong, but I would not it wouldn't surprise me if I filled pretty much all four of these shelves with my patents Cry sock yarn. I guess we'll wait and see. Once we pull it all out and see what I've got, we'll go from there. Anyways, I'm going to end today's video right here on this note because it is the middle of October and it is a beautiful day. It is summertime temperatures out. I'm going to take advantage of the nice day. It was my son who just called. I'm going to go meet him at his house, put on our masks and 
go for a little walk outside because this could be the very last nice, um, you know, kind of summery fall day we have because it's supposed to get really quite chilly this weekend. So I'm going to go for a little walk, enjoy some sunshine. And I hope you guys got lots of knitting done and we'll come back. Oh my gosh. I can't believe the next thing I'm going to have to take you is downstairs and only a very select handful of people have ever seen all my yarn down in the basement. Caroline and Adrian never even made it down, which is, I don't know why, because I, to I totally would have taken them down, but we just never, we t I don't know. We just never did. So I guess they'll get to see it here on, on the podcast. So that's that. I'm out of here. I will see you in the next video.